On today's episode of the 360 Daily Show, find out who Forrest Whitaker's extreme lookalike is and why social media won't stop talking about him. Why Kanye West gave Kim K a million dollars? What Ronaldo had to say about the looming rape accusations? What magazine featured Teniola Akbata and Nonso Amadi? And what Kanye West and his dad did to celebrate him being cancer free? First off on today's trending news, we have Kanye West and him and his dad Ray West recently had some bonding time over a plate of bugs. Guys, get that, bugs. And Kanye was very open about sharing the experience. The superstar rapper took to Twitter to share a photo of their sumptuous celebratory snack with the caption, overcome fear and my dad and I are going to eat this plate of bugs to celebrate him beating cancer. No more fear. Now I do not know how that came about or how Kanye West decided to celebrate his dad beating cancer with eating bugs but I guess different strokes for different folks right and Kanye West is probably the weirdest guy out there so I'm not even surprised at all. So guys, get this, one of my favorite actors of all time, Forrest Whitaker, has a lookalike. Not a twin, just someone who looks more like him. Now, we've known Forrest Whitaker for a while. He's been acting forever. He's even won an Academy Award, a Golden Globe, and a Screen Actors Guild Award for his portrayal of dictator Idi Amin in 2006's The Last King of Scotland. Well, it turns out, though, that Forrest isn't the only actor in his family, and he actually has three siblings, three, who have spent time on the big and small screen. He's got a sister named Deborah, a brother named Damon, and another brother named Ken. And Twitter just learned about Ken, which typically would be, obviously, no big news, except that Ken looks exactly, I mean exactly like Forrest, even though he was born just two years after. Up next on the trending news, we have Jennifer Lawrence, and she takes the spotlight for the launch of Dior's Cruise 2019 campaign. The French fashion house continues its long-standing relationship with the American actress. Lensed by Vivian Sesson, Jennifer wears the designs of Maria Grazia, Churi Churi, which feature inspiration for Mexican horsewomen. An equine poses alongside the blonde in each shot. Handbags of the season include large shoppers and the saddie bag with the graphic patchwork of the Dior Oblique canvas. Diane von Furstenberg has just announced that it will go fur free. Diane von Furstenberg announced on Wednesday that it has committed to going fur free starting 2019, joining a growing list of fashion and luxury labels ditching fur under mounting pressure from campaigners. The brand has partnered with the Humane Society of the United States and PETA to work towards eradicating the exploitation of animals in the fashion industry and will be eliminating exotic skins, angora and from its collections as of next Next year. The label already banned mohair in July of this year following a Peter expose. As part of the initiative, DVF will be concentrating on innovative new textiles which can be used as fur substitutes in its future collections. Up next, we have the spotted segment, and Beyonce looked all shades of perfect in an all-white number by Shahara Avnet custom-made look during her on the run to tour stop in Vancouver. With Halloween less than a month away now, everyone and their mother is starting to get in the holiday spirit. I mean, I'm not in the spirit because we don't celebrate that here. But Hot Topic has the best new Beetlejuice themed palette that everyone can't stop talking about. The palette itself was made to look exactly like the book for the dead featured in the 1988 movie starring Alex Baldwin, Winona Ryder, and Gina Davis. The brand developed the palette in honor of Beetlejuice's 30th anniversary, which was this past March. Aptly called the Beetlejuice Handbook for the Recently Deceased, the 12-pan palette in question features shades of orange, teal, emerald, and violet, amongst others, all of which come shaped as tiny coffins. Each shade has its own spooky moniker inspired by the timeless Tim Burton film, such as Dark Room, a bright purple, strange and unusual, a stack black, shrunken head, and a glitter flecked Cooper. With a variety of high voltage hues to choose from, there are at least three to four eye makeup looks you can create using this palette. Up next on our beauty segment, Hello Kitty has branched into skincare. The Sanrio-owned Japanese cartoon character has teamed up with LA-based skincare label 
on an eight-piece beauty series, as first reported by Bustle. The collection is the result of a long-term partnership that will allegedly see further collaboration released in the future. Dubbed The Cream Shop and Sanrio, the collection spans everything from sheet masks and lip balms to hand creams and bath bombs with false eyelashes and a spa headband thrown in for good measure. Featuring colorful Hello Kitty motifs and packaging, every piece in the adorable collection clocks at $10 or less. And our social media star of the day is none other than Mama Toby. Multi-talented comedian Oliwa Toby additional Oni Batedo, popularly known as Mama Toby, is, of course, our social media star of the day. The talented marine soldier who rose to fame by posting videos of his alter ego character Mama Toby on Instagram is definitely one of the funniest digital comedians to come out of Nigeria. He has a degree in management and finance from the Park University and is currently studying for a master's in business and technology at Stevenson University. Over the years, he has been able to amass more than 270,000 followers. So guys, make sure you check him out. Former Big Brother Niger housemates Leo Da Silva is the cover star for Taylor Live magazine's latest issue. In a quick chat with the magazine, Leo Da Silva decides to reveal his relationship status between him and Cece and he also gave us the scope on how he manages his life as a model, real estate agent and entertainer. Up next, we have Zenya Katava and she's taken to the outdoors in the October 2018 issue of Glamour Italy. Lensed by Chris Kramer, the Brunei beauty embraces fall boho ensembles for the spread. Fashion editor Simone Gudarelli selects a mix of checkered coats, loose-fitting pantsuits, and slouchy knits. Zenia wears the designs of Blue Girl, Michael Kors, Missani, and more. Tenny Olaakbata and Nonso Amadi are definitely two noteworthy stars and what's best way to celebrate them than having them on the cover of a magazine that celebrates their craft. These rising stars are pushing boundaries, creating their own lanes and capturing a global audience. They are sparking new energy in the industry while creating a unique sound that is helping to push the next generation. They talk about their careers, creativity, family and many more. Up next, we have Betty Frank, who lands two covers for the October 2018 issue of Harper's Bazaar, Spain. Lensed by Paul Ballard, the Dutch model wears a Carolina Herrera coat and a blouse while posing on a boat for the first. And for the second, Betty models a red sweater from Nina Ricci with airs bottoms. Inside the fashion glossy, Betty embraces nautical fashions on the high seas. Stylist Anna Tova selects the designs of Sakai, Lacoste, and Dress Van Noten, amongst others. First off, on our Daily Dish segment, we had the most popular footballer in the world, and I'm talking about Cristiano Ronaldo, and he has released a statement addressing the rape accusations made against him. We reported earlier on Tuesday that Catherine Moyega had accused Ronaldo of raping her in 2009, after which she had signed an out-of-court settlement with him. She recently opened a civil suit against the Juventus player, seeking the statement voided. Although Ronaldo had addressed the allegation on his Instagram Live, Terminate Fake News, he has officially come out to deny it. He wrote on Twitter, I firmly deny the accusations being issued against me. Rape is an abominable crime that goes against everything I am and I believe in. Keen as I may be to clear my name, I refuse to feed the media spectacle created by people seeking to promote themselves at my expense. My clear conscience will thereby allow me to await with tranquility the results of any and all investigations. Now, now talking about this though, what I wish for everyone concerned is that justice is served. If the case is investigated and, if, and it turns out that Ronaldo is guilty, of course he should face the full extent of the law. But if the woman is just trying to slander his name, I think she as well should face the full extent of the law and she should be prosecuted to the fullest. But if she signed a non-disclosure agreement some time ago, why is she coming forward now to say that statement is void? And from what I read, she actually collected money as well for settlement. So I do not know what the truth is, but I pray that investigation reveals that for us. Now, if you're on social media, you definitely know that 50 Cent is the king 
of trolls and he took to Instagram recently to attack his baby mama again. This time his grouse has to do with her desire to be on reality TV. In a photo shared to his Instagram, 50 is seen sitting next to a set of gym rafters next to a dog while examining a document. His caption reads, see right here Shaniqua, this is the life rights agreement you signed. See this paragraph says, you cannot do reality TV, okay? LOL, hashtag get the strap, hashtag Bellator. It was as though he was referring to Shaniqua as the dog in the photo. He then posted another similar photo again, also seated in the bleachers, this time with the dog lying down beside him and captioned it, you're starting to look a little thirsty, you okay? Child support is over, I don't know what else to say. Wait, call Floyd, he will let you strip at his joint. Hashtag Bellator. Hashtag Leech Manduroy. But Shaniqua's son, Marquise Jackson, wasn't having it at all. And he hit back at his father by sharing both of his father's Instagram posts as well as his petty captions. Marquise then threw a very subtle shade by insinuating that his dad is immature and needs to grow up. He wrote, and y'all wonder why I do not respect him as a man or a father. You had a good run, but it's over, big fella. LOL, it's been a decade. You are 40 plus. You can grow up any day now and for me i would say ouch now for someone who is always trolling i think 50 cent passed the gene on to his first born and uh i think knowing 50 cent that he's going to reply his son because he has had a bit of a back and forth with the son before on social media said he's going to cut his son out of his will and two of them have been at loggerheads since now i don't know why that is i mean father and son you're supposed to be close not shading each other on social media and i think 50 cent actually needs to be mature consigning his baby mama i mean do not put the mother of your child on blast on social media and do not you know insult the mother of your kid i mean where are they going to learn any values from but I think this will continue. I know 50 Cent doesn't back down, and I'll keep my eyes glued to see if any more gist comes out of that story. Oscar-winning actress Halle Berry, and one of the sweetest mamacitas of all time in my opinion, took to Instagram to lash out at a man, making the sexual assault allegations against her. The man claims that he bumped into Halle at a party, and Halle attacked him by grabbing his genitals. Now, when Halle saw the accusation, she immediately responded saying, I do not know you, brah and you do not get to make comments about me like this. I have never met you, nor have I ever disrespected anyone the way you have suggested. Now, get a life and get the F off my page with that bull S. Peace, chicken grease. <laughs> now, after Halley's response, Wilson made his Instagram page private. He has not followed up on the accusations, and we wonder what he has got to say after that brutal comeback by Halle Berry. Now, people, I do not know what it is, but there seems to be a double standard when it comes to uh, sexual assault between men and women. If a man, I know for certain, if a man was accused of that sort of thing, uh, like, you know, in the way it has been usually, a lot of people will actually boycott him before they even know what the real story is. So I think even though Halle Berry has come out to deny the allegations i think people should actually look into that incident because you never know what is true the fact that Halle Berry has the has the bigger platform doesn't mean she's correct so i implore those in charge to actually look into that and justice should be served up next we have tyson beckford and the supermodel is being dragged by social media users now remember a couple of months ago when tyson beckford tried to clown kim kardashian's shape and she responded by insinuating that he was gay. Hmm. Then Kanye West followed up by threatening Tyson Beckford to keep Kim's name out of his mouth. It was all a big drama that seemed to go away. That was until Tyson decided to post a very lewd IG emoji putting an eggplant in Kim's mouth. This was a bit too far in my opinion and in everyone else's opinion and it has backfired horribly for Tyson. Kim has yet to respond but the internet is at his neck. Even people who don't rock with Kim are coming for Tyson for this misogyny and nobody seems to have the models back. Now, I think Tyson Beckford needs to take a chill pill when it comes to this. I mean, after all, that is someone's wife and Kanye didn't really threaten him, so to speak. He just said, keep my wife's name out your mouth. And I think it's just, I, I think that was like, you know, when Kanye did that video where he was work, walking and make, talking to Nick Cannon and Tyson. I think, I mean, man to man stuff, you should mm, not speak ill about someone else's wife and all that back and forth on social media doesn't have to come around and i don't know the thing had died down now tyson just put up that uh 
emoji and it all you know came crashing down for him and i think social media users are actually right to blast him because i think in my opinion that is by far too far <laughs> Talking about Kim Kardashian and she is sharing some good stories about her life with Kanye West. On a recent podcast interview with Ashley Graham, Kim says she turned down a generous proposal to promote a fashion boutique and Kanye followed up by matching their offer. Kim said, so a brand offered me a million dollars to do a post on some of their clothing. They typically, I don't want to say who the brand is, knock off Yeezy. So I said, it's great money. Let me ask Kanye how he feels about it. He said, no, babe. Kim said the next week Mother's Day came and Kanye West delivered her a million dollar check for supporting him and turning down the money. He then gave her a percentage of his company. Now guys, that is a way to say thank you to the woman of your dreams, your wife, your girlfriend, your spouse, your partner, whatever that person is. Kanye West keeps on setting the bar. Now giving your wife a check of a million dollars and also a percentage of your company is not too shabby anywhere in the world. And I want to be like Kanye when I grow up. Up next, we have Australian fashion brand Zimmerman and the Enlist leading face Anja Rubik for its Resort 2019 campaign. The new collection called Corsage focuses on fitted yet comfortable shapes including pinstriped pantsuits, breezy dresses and plunging swimwear. Posing poolside, Anja soaks up the sun rays in romantic designs that arrive in stores and online starting this week. The blonde wears her signature wavy love hairstyle with a sun-kissed makeup look. The spookiest month of the year is here, and if you're still looking for your costume, H&M has plenty of options. Its latest trend guide called Pretty Spooky features playful and whimsical styles. Choose from a skeleton costume, pistol mermaid, or dear onesies. Want even more costume ideas? Be a clown in black and white, or a race car driver in fiery red. Right on time for their concert in Lagos, Nigeria tomorrow, American Electric dance music trio Major Lazer have unlocked a brand new visual for Loyal. The Afrobeat and dance fusion features Nigeria's Kiss Daniel alongside Jamaica's reggae star Cranium. Wine for me, take it slow. Do you wanna wait for the door? I'm a rock star, yes, you know. When I enter, they go down low. Oh, yeah. Caro, I need Pasclaro. You a diva, yes, I know. It be you who I'm talking to. No. Rihanna is no stranger to turning heads with her statement outfits, and this time is not any different. The recently appointed ambassador of Barbados was spotted rocking a Python monochrome number for her Fenty Beauty first anniversary event on Sydney Harbour in Australia. What is better than one Major Lazer new video? Two of them. Major Lazer debuts a new song tied up featuring Nigerian singer Mr. Easy and Ray. You know, say I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me if you got me. Too. Tell me if you got me too. Oh. Say me, I don't know why, but me never stop thinking about you. About you. This song comes accompanied by a third collaboration between Major Lazer and South African director Adrian Lowe. Tied Up is a third of a handful of collaborations with African artists coming from Major Lazer this fall. Okay guys, unfortunately we have come to the end of this episode of the 360 Daily Show. Remember to keep up with the gist online, we're there at www.myspice.tv and our social media handle is at Spice TV Africa. Now find out what I get up to when I leave here. My social media handle is at the official SO across all platforms. And until next time, this has been the 360 Daily Show. I gotta go. See you soon. <laughs>